Vim is the most widely used terminal text editor, and the most popular text editor among developers in general. The only text editors that could be considered similar to Vim, or are the closest to Vim, would be Emacs and Nano, but neither are nearly as popular as Vim. With Vim, you can navigate through your codebase with unparalleled swiftness and finesse, executing complex refactoring maneuvers with the precision of a master craftsman. A mere 1x developer can become a 10x coding virtuoso overnight just by switching editors. And and if you don't believe me, just ask Primogen. Unlike VS Code where you never have to leave your editor for the terminal, in Vim you never have to leave the terminal for your editor. Why bother switching back and forth when you can just stay in the terminal and do everything from there? Vim truly blurs the line between the terminal and the editor, making for a truly immersive and, dare I say, addictive coding experience. Are you tired of seeing VS Code take all the memory in the world with no compensation whatsoever? Maybe it's time to switch to a lightweight terminal based text editor. Unlike most IDEs, Vim can actually be used over SSH because it's terminal based. In fact, most Linux servers will have Vim pre-installed, making it the go-to editor for remote code. We can completely ignore and forget the VS Code remote development extension that also happens to support SSH as well as other things too because you know, Vim is the best and at the end of the day, that's really all that matters. And don't forget about Vim's endless customization options. If you can dream it, you can do it. Assuming you know how to write a Vim script or Lua plugin but you know who cares about that why settle for a perfectly good editor that already has all the features you need when you can spend hours and i mean hours days months years tweaking vim to your heart's content and let's not forget about the productivity boost vim's modal editing keyboard shortcuts and ability to add custom macros are so much better than anything else out there who cares if other editors can emulate vim within their own environment it's just not the same as the real thing is it so in conclusion forget about those bloated slow, user-friendly editors, Vim is the only way to truly get the job done. Who needs performance, ease of use, or modern features anyways? Vim is where it's at. <clears throat> so, with all of that out of the way, um, let's get started using Vim. To start using Vim, you first need to decide which version to install. You have two options, the original Vim, which is written in Vim scripts, or the more modern and user-friendly NeoVim, which is a fork of Vim with added features and support for Lua plugins, while still being mostly compatible with Vim script plugins. Personally, I would recommend NeoVim because its added features and plugin support are just more user-friendly. However, many servers may only have regular Vim installed, so it's really up to you to decide which one you want to use. In terms of functionality, the two editors are very similar, nigh identical, with only minor differences that won't really affect your learning process. If you're using a Mac or Linux system, there's a good chance that Vim is already installed, but it's always a good idea to check just to make sure. To do so, simply open up a terminal and type Vim. If you see a screen that says VI improved, you're good to go. However, if you don't have Vim installed, you can find installation instructions online. For Debian or Ubuntu users, you can install Vim by typing sudo apt install Vim in your terminal. Windows users can download and install Vim straight from the Vim website, but I would recommend using other installation methods. For example, you can install WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux, or Git Bash, which comes with Vim out of the box. Git Bash is also a great option because it's a crucial version control system that many developers use in conjunction with Vim. Alternatively, you can also install NeoVim, which is a forked version of Vim with more features and better compatibility with new plugins. If you're using a Mac and have Homebrew installed, you can install NeoVim by typing brew install NeoVim in your terminal. Windows users can use the package manager Chocolatey if they have it installed by typing choco install NeoVim in an administrative PowerShell window. Debian and Ubuntu users can obviously just use sudo apt install NeoVim. Once you've installed Vim or NeoVim, you can verify your installation by typing Vim or NVim in your terminal and seeing the familiar Vim screen. With Vim or NeoVim installed, you're ready to dive into the world of modal editing and take your coding to the next level. To open a file in Vim, type Vim followed by the name of the file that you want to edit in the terminal. If you're not familiar with using the terminal, make sure you're in the same directory as the file you want to edit. Directories are just folders, and you can use the ls command to see all available files and directories in the current directory. If you are using Windows PowerShell, use the dir command instead. To navigate through directories, use the cd command followed by the directory you want to enter. Use cd period period to navigate back to the previous directory. To exit Vim without saving any changes, type colon q. To save changes and exit, type wq. If you want to force exit without saving changes, type colon q exclamation mark. If you accidentally enter insert or visual mode, press escape or control C to return to normal mode before exiting. 
In Vim, there are different modes for accomplishing different purposes, such as selecting, navigating, and deleting, without ever having to touch your mouse or theoretically even leave the home row. This leads to faster and more ergonomic workflows. The different modes in Vim are Normal Mode, the default mode for navigating and executing commands, Insert Mode, the mode for typing and inserting text, Visual Mode, the mode for selecting text, Command Mode, the mode for executing Vim commands, Replace Mode, the mode for replacing text, and for a more comprehensive list of Vim actions and commands in their respective modes, you can refer to the cheat sheet provided in the video description, or look for other sources online that meet your needs. Normal mode is the default mode in Vim, and it allows you to navigate your file without having to use the arrow keys. Instead, you can use H, J, K, and L keys for left, down, up, and right navigation respectively, which can improve your productivity by keeping your hands on the home row. You can move multiple lines in any direction by specifying the number of lines and then the direction. Additionally, you can really repeat any action in Vim by adding a number before the action. There are also some other navigation commands available in Vim, such as W to go to the beginning of the next word, E to go to the end of the next word, B to go to the start of the previous word, and GE to go to the end of the previous word. To scroll through the entire file, you can use Ctrl E to scroll down and Ctrl Y to scroll up. If you make any changes, you can use U to undo them and Ctrl R to redo them while in normal mode. To copy a line of text in Vim, you can use YY, which yanks the entire line and then pastes it using the P command wherever you want. On the other hand, deleting a line of text can be done using the DD command, which also yanks the text for some reason. The next mode is what may or may not be a gateway to sanity for some people. The following mode in Vim is quite familiar to most people and it allows you to insert text into your file like normal. In this mode, Vim functions like any other editor you may have used before. To enter insert mode, press I in normal mode. Press A to append text after the current character. Press O to begin a new line below the current line. And yeah, you can easily return to normal mode by pressing either escape or control C. The visual mode in Vim allows you to select text similar to how you would by dragging a mouse. The benefit of visual mode is that you never have to touch the mouse. Enter visual mode by typing V while in normal mode, or shift V for visual line mode. In visual mode, you can perform various actions on the selected text, such as deleting it using the D command or yanking it using the Y command. Typing R followed by a character replaces the selected text with the character. In Vim, Command Mode is a special mode that lets you perform certain actions that cannot be done in any other mode. You can enter Command Mode by typing a colon while in Normal Mode. Once in Command Mode, you can do the following. You can use forward slash followed by a pattern of characters to search for a specific string in your file. Use the question mark followed by a pattern of characters to search for a string in the reverse order. Use the command colon noh to remove highlighting from the text in the current window. Use the command colon help or H to open a new window containing documentation and helpful suggestions. Shift R will bring you into replace mode. In this mode, anything you type will replace existing text. Before entering this mode, you should move your cursor to the text you want to edit. Additionally, R will just replace one character. After installing Vim and learning the basics, the next step is to customize its settings by setting up plugins and configurations that suit your needs. In Vim, plugins can be installed and managed using a plugin manager such as Vundle, Pathogen, or Plug. To set up configurations in regular Vim, you first need to navigate to your home directory by typing cd tilde in your terminal instance. Once you're in your home directory, you can create a configuration file called .vimrc by typing vim.vimrc. This will open up a new Vim window where you can add various configurations. To set line numbers, you can add set number to your .vimrc file. To add relative line numbers, you can add set relative number on a new line. You can also set auto indentation by adding set auto indent. The same can be done with NeoVim, but using a different directory. The directories are listed below for the different operating systems. Many different plugin managers exist and have different installation instructions. For the purposes of this video, we are going to be covering the most widely used plugin manager, plug or vimplug. First, we need to create our plugged directory inside of our mvim folder using the mkdir command. Following the instructions of the GitHub repo, we can copy the shell command to install the manager for either vim or neovim, depending on our operating system. We can then call plug begin at that directory to begin using the plug plugin manager. We then add the plugins we want to add by prefixing them with plug. 
Finally, we end by calling plug end. We then install the plugins using the vim command plug install, and just like that, you've added your first plugin. We can also add key bindings which automatically execute commands or different combinations of keys with the sequence of keys we specify. In general, there are so many other configurations that you can add to vim, it's pretty much endless. So I just wanted to be very, very concise and just give you some of what you can do in vim because it's just so, so extensive what you can actually do. Vim may have a steep learning curve, but with practice and patience, it can become a powerful tool in your arsenal. You now have the power of Vim at your fingertips. With its multitude of modes and commands, you'll be able to navigate and edit text with lightning speed and unparalleled precision. As always, feel free to explore the vast resources available online to improve your Vim skills. I provided a cheat sheet in the description of this video, it's just a random one I found online. Many similar ones exist, and they'll probably work just as well. As the great philosopher Aristotle once said, Excellence is never an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, and intelligent execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. Getting good with Vim will always be the result of high intention and intelligent execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. Well, that is according to some Vim users anyways.